you, sorry, or... Uh, you no, you don't know, but you can, you can pick one. Yes. Yeah. Or oh, better, better um, option is. Yeah, sorry, you pick, so if you pick one box, it's, it's... If you pick one box... If you pick, if you pick, if you pick, if you, you can either pick one box or two boxes, yeah. right? If you're going to pick one box, instead of just picking the one with the thousand, you might as well go with the one that's probably got the million. Yeah, so if you pick the opaque box, there's a predictor and it knows that you would have only picked, chosen one box and you can get a million dollars. If you pick... Here we go. <laughs> yes. Use, use this as, yeah. Uh, I'll <laughs> So, the predictor knows that you're going to pick one box or two boxes. 98% accurate. It's 98% accurate, although... But I will dispute that. The tarot card reader says that it's only 50% accurate. So, this is... I'll, I'll, may I? Yep. Alright, so, um, Newcomb's Paradox is a game. And essentially, you pick one of two boxes, um, which we call box B. That's one option, or you pick both boxes A and B, and a predictor is, has predicted your choice. And if the predictor is correct, and you pick box, box A and B, you only get a thousand. Because box B is empty. Hmm. If the predictor is correct and you pick, uh, if you just pick box B, the predictor will give you a million dollars. So this is the this is the outcomes, okay? And. Uh, once, once the bunny, once the predictor's made the prediction, uh, she can't alter what's in the boxes. Yep. We'll be finding the predictor's out. a mysterious character. So before I hand proceedings over to but Jerry, sorry, there's another bit, isn't there? If you take the two boxes, there is a chance. Yes, there is a chance you can get the zero. Yeah. So yeah, so if the predictor is, if the predictor is supposed to be invariably accurate. Almost. Invariably, almost invariably accurate. So, well, you guys don't have gods on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe the predictor's ninety nine percent accurate. So if he's incorrect and you pick A and B, you actually get a million and a thousand dollars. But if it's you only pick B and anything, and the predictor is incorrect, you get absolutely nothing. So it's a, it's like a decision game, and there's two main ways of playing it, and. Uh, Either you pick A and B, or you pick B. And so I'm going to be presenting a case for A and B, and Jerry is a very well-known one-boxer, an expert on Newcomb's paradox, and he's going to be picking box B. But I do have something to add to that. I absolutely reject any claims as the adjudicator of bias. Further, I'm repulsed by any suggestions made by Gerald that I have previously claimed all two boxes should be exterminated. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do we all understand you know, Newcomb's problem or Newcomb's paradox? Are we, are we, are we with it? We do a show of hands who understands it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So who's got a, who's got any questions about it? Right. So yeah, in a, in a sense, you are trying to beat the predictor. So. Uh, if, if you, one way to beat the predictor is the maximum you can get, which is called dominance, principle of dominance, is one thousand. Uh, sorry, one million one thousand. And uh, if the predictor gets it wrong, then you get that. So one way of doing that is right in the literature is to kind of think one box thoughts. Right, you think in one box thoughts, and so the predictor's like, oh, okay, I'll put the one million in, in box B. Right, so you don't miss, miss out on the one million in box B. You can't see it, but it's in there. Because you're kind of thinking one box thoughts, and then yeah, you're kind of like kind of acting psychologically or whatever like a one boxer. So up you come to the table, and the predictor's already put the money in. Up you come, and you know you go to reach for the one box, and the predictor's like, excellent, got it right. And then you go, no, I'll take five, and you now have the extra grand. <laughs> so that's a two boxing strategy, which I'm going to actually be arguing against. I think it's a bit of an illusion, and the way I'm going to argue against is. Uh, Actually, we've had to argue hard not to have pokies put in this place. No, not really. There, there wouldn't be pokies in this place. But, you know... That's what I was going to say. You want pokies in the place. No, I was going to say, isn't it us as humans being animals that will 
invariably hit all the boxes. And we, we want well, all. sure, we sure, we'll agree. come to that. We yeah. Look, I mean, look, you know, the, the money's either there or not, right? The predictors put it in, so, yeah, shit, it is. I mean, even though I do think, I, I wouldn't say two boxes should be exterminated, however, I do think two boxes are incorrect. Even though I do think that, I can see the lure of two boxing for the, you know, onto Mitch. And that is that, like, you know, the money's already in there. And so then, you know, you want to go in and just, you know, just grab both boxes and get the extra grand. Look, the extra grand's just fucking sitting there, mate. There's the extra grand. So, you know, if you're going to get one box, why don't you just grab the second? So this is what I'm going to have to argue against. This is the standard way a one box proceeds. So, returning to the issue of the pokies. Now, what happens, now I don't know the latest uh, legalisms, but as far as I'm aware, the pokey machines are set on 80 cents in the dollar, okay? It's more like 90 now. Yeah. Is it 90? Okay, 90 cents in the dollar. Depends on if you're playing at a pub, club or casino. <laughs> right, lawyers are in the well, obviously lawyers are in the audience. Depending on whether one plays the pub, club or casino, it's uh, 80 cents or 90 cents, and management isn't responsible for any uh, losses incurred, nor for you leaving your kids in the car and then getting dehydrated and dying. Um, so that's that's the case with um, that's the case with. Um, I liked it how they said it wasn't addictive. So. Yeah, or with you getting gambling. Hey, we've got RSG, responsible service of gambling. That is, you serve as much, you know, get as much gambling into people as you possibly can, and get as much money out of them. That's that's responsible. So you know, this is the, the porky. Do you get if you're, actually, if, you're, if you're a drinker though, you get more than eighty percent as a hand free piss. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Hand free piss. So, so they get like eighty point. Whatever. And you can see how this rule There's works. More than okay, so you keep handing them free piss. They keep putting um, a, a, a dollar in and getting ninety cents back. Okay, and so you're just—it's just free money for the rich. You're just giving money to the rich, generally man, and that's the way it works. So that's why it's good that there's no pokies here, and that's why the kind of pokies are such a dud. They're just a rip off. They play on people's false hopes, and and uh, they just create misery and despair in a. Uh, amidst a nil nihilistic flashing of lights. So, <clears throat> what about your dickhead mate who goes, oh yeah, but, you know, I went in and put, you know, one buck in the pokies and pulled it and got, you know, a thousand bucks out. Okay, so that certainly can happen. Uh, and what am I going to say about that? Well, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that, like, there's a whole lot of different ways the world could fold out, right? And one of them is, Put the dollar in the pokies and you get the thousand bucks out. Another one could be put the dollar in the pokies and get sixty cents out. Another one could be put the dollar in the pokies and get nine, uh, eight, and zero out. Another one could be put the dollar in the pokies, get three hundred. So there are all these different ways the world can. No, was it a conspiracy? No. Can we just keep going because we're going to run out of time? Um, <laughs> so there's all these different ways it can it can it can it can, it can work out. But if you average all those different ways, you're getting 80 cents in the dollar, and that's or 90 cents in the dollar, and that's all you're getting. So you don't do it. Okay, so how does this relate to Newcomb's illustrious paradox? And I'll just turn this bit of asbestos around so people can see it. Can I just interject, purely because of time, and because I feel like I understand this pretty well, there was a question asked before about the predictor. Does everyone who didn't understand now understand the predictor based on what Jerry said? I don't understand yeah, what they're predicting. Uh, Alright, let me just say... Can we clarify the predictions? Yeah, we can clarify them. Is going to be worth yeah, yes, and, yes and no. Okay, the, the, the idea of this, of, of Newcomb's game, is that it, it looks like you can get this solution. So a solution you can get that is the best is called a dominant solution. So it looks like because the money's either there or not, there's a dominant solution of 1,000 plus 1 million. Okay? However, I'm running an expected utility argument where, um, where on expected utilities, and I'm going to do the maths for you, you're better off just going to, to a one box. Okay, so, and the reason why I'm equating it with the gambling and the pokies is because on the expected utilities of the gambling, of the pokies, um, you're, only get, you're better off not putting your money in. And also, once you average out all the possible results on dominance, the best possible result, dominance, you're also better not putting your money in. So it's really easy. If you're smart, if, you're, if, you, if you've got half a brain, don't play the pokies, okay? So it's really straightforward. But in Newcombs, because the money 
is either always there or not the dominant and that expected utility solutions come apart. Now, the, the point about the predictor in this is that um, 